Halo 3, the final chapter of the blockbuster franchise, arrives on September 25th. In the thrilling conclusion to this epic trilogy, Master Chief returns to Earth to finish the fight against the Covenant and the Flood. And yet, one of the biggest questions remaining is not what happens next, but how did it all begin? 100,000 years ago, a cataclysmic series of events led to the destruction of all life in the galaxy. Centuries later, a mysterious figure is broadcasting cryptic transmissions bearing a warning. History is repeating itself. Humanity is on the brink of elimination. Embedded in the messages is the key to our survival, and for one in particular, our survival is the key to redemption for a tragic mistake made long ago. Thus begins the Iris Campaign, a five-episode journey through the origins of the Halo universe. This is the story of how the campaign unfolded, how gamers discovered new and exciting information on the Forerunners, the Flood, and the Halos themselves. This is how it all begins. The campaign began on Monday, June 11th, when a mysterious entity calling himself Adjutant Reflex hacked the forums on Bungie.net. This single post sent a ripple through the Halo and gaming communities. After several more enigmatic messages, on June 14th, Halo fans received a cryptic email telling them to look for the signs and noting that a journey must commence. Hidden on the email was the same icon seen on Adjutant Reflex's avatar. Later that night, the next clue was discovered. Small ads in the weekly circulars for Best Buy and Circuit City, containing the now familiar glyph and pointing users to an online comic. The comic, for the first time ever, told the story of how a forerunner structure was built on Earth. Hidden in the final panels was the iris glyph. The following day, teams of people were spotted in major cities around the world, carrying signs and passing out flyers bearing the same glyph. These people claim to be from an organization called the Society of the Ancients. Their core belief? That aliens have visited Earth in the distant past and given humanity evolutionary bumps. Both websites contained the same IP address, which led users to the first of five Forerunner servers. Here they discovered a video time capsule and data log detailing the final moments before the Halos were originally activated thousands of years ago. Meanwhile, Adjutant Reflex resurfaced, this time warning users of a new, more powerful entity. But soon he was terminated, his messages deleted. The game had begun. Over 400,000 users visited Server 1, and traffic to Halo3.com more than tripled. Forums on Bungie.net and major fan sites came alive. The events of Episode 1 were covered on every major gaming site, as well as several major news publications.
This is how it all begins. Just in time to once again dance on the knife edge of oblivion. To relive what the halos have helped to destroy and more. For two enemies now stand where before there was only one. A fate we escaped, and a fate we may relive. I almost convinced myself that no one was listening. That the waves of the past would roll through once again. But a chance remains to change the universe anew. Learn of our past. Take these keys and dip from the wells of history. Perhaps through others' eyes you may find how to save us all. By now, Halo fans were scouring the internet, looking for the next clue. On July 5th, they found it in the form of ads on Windows Live Expo and Craigslist, among other sites. The ads appeared to be placed by a flood containment service and contained an 800 number. Over 300,000 people dialed the 800 number over the next four days. Each day, a new piece of the conversation was unlocked. Uh, we're working on it. For the moment, we're simply hiding the data behind a uh, false menu item. Security will be updated before the next system approaches. And access? 3463 or something? Finally, on the fourth day, a transcript of the full conversation revealed a hidden URL. That URL led users to a Windows Live Maps interface featuring some mysterious garbled text and pinpointing the location of various retailers in the U.S. Halo fans flocked to their nearest retailer and quickly found the next clue. A cryptic quote from a French philosopher hidden on Xbox 360 kiosks. The French philosopher was the key. Using a 400-year-old cipher he developed, users were able to decode the message. The decoded text led users to the second server, which contained valuable new insight into the origins and the dangers of the flood. Within the first 24 hours, over 57,000 people visited the second server and downloaded its contents. Welcome to the Stroma Conferencing Centre. Please enter your PIN followed by <coughs> Password accepted. Now accessing conference archive number 16180. Participant 1. Isn't necessary, and neither is the doc download. Uh, there's no way to tell yet. Jamie's looking into the records to find out how many closed sites there are. But as for active cleanup, somewhere around three, four thousand. Oh, here it is. Uh, hold on. 402K07002. And in terms of numbers, most of these are past the PPE stage. By the time we have the site clean, they've moved on to more pressing needs. After all, we've had some extremely unpredictable seasons lately. On everything we still need to look into. Security will be updated before the next system approaches.
Thanks. Welcome to the Stroma Conferencing Centre. Please enter your PIN followed by Password accepted. Now accessing conference archive number 16180. Participant 2. I agree. This isn't going to be a public resource. Uh, pass on the document number so I can delete it. With a few exceptions, uh, Site 34, Site 4, 107, and 37. The center usually goes in before we do. That's been my experience. No need. Their rep is available to us anytime we need her. Uh, we're working on it. For the moment, we're simply hiding the data behind a uh, false menu item. <coughs> okay, great. Bye, everyone. Welcome to the Stroma Conferencing Center. Please enter your PIN followed by <coughs> Password accepted. Now accessing conference archive number 16180. Participant 3. So where does that put us in terms of the numbers then? Even with CDC involvement? Oh, sorry. That gives us tabs on all the active locations. What about security? And access IP slash three four six three or something. Great, I'll pass it on. I have to drop. Thanks, everyone. Welcome to the Stroma Conferencing Center. Please enter your PIN followed by <coughs> Password accepted. Now accessing conference archive number 16180. Participant 4. Roughly.
And out of that 4000 or so, we are expecting to close shop on the bulk by the end of the month. Should we be integrating the NIOSH database? Enter the access code after our site. Yeah, slash 5467K actually. It should be operational anytime. Thanks, bye. Now It is necessary, and neither is the doc download. I agree. This isn't going to be a public resource. Uh, pass on the document number so I can delete it. So where does that put up in terms of the numbers then? Uh, there's no way to tell yet. Jimmy's looking into the records to find out how many closed sites there are, but as for active cleanup, somewhere around three, 000, four thousand. Roughly. Oh, here it is. Uh, hold on. Four o two k. 07002. And in terms of numbers, most of these are past the DPE stage. And out of that 4,000 or so, we're expecting to close shop on the bulk by the end of the month. With a few exceptions, uh, site 34, site 4, 107, and 37. Even the PDC involvement? The center usually goes in before we do. That's been my experience. Mm -hmm. By the time we have the site clean, they've moved on and we're pressing need. After all, we've got some extremely unpredictable seasons on it. Should we be integrating the NIOSH database? No need. Their rep is available to us anytime we need her. That gives us tabs on all the active elections? On everything we still need to look into. What about security? Uh, we're working on it. For the moment, we're simply hiding the data behind a uh, false menu item. Security will be updated before the next system approaches. And access? Enter the access code after our site. IP slash 463 or something? Yeah, slash 5467K actually. It should be operational any time. Great, I'll pass it on. I have to drop. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, bye. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Thank you for calling Flood Containment Control. Our offices are currently closed for the holiday week. Due to an abnormally high volume of calls, we are currently unable to accept your message. Please call back at a later date. You ever wonder what's up there? Like what? Maybe someone up there was wondering what it's like here. I guess. Do you think we'll ever meet them? I hope so. Don't you?
While Halo fans were dissecting all of the information they had received from Server 2, MSN and Samsung launched pages hosting Halo-themed downloadable content. Among the downloads, an exclusive Halo 3 ringtone. Over the course of the next week, over 300,000 people visited these sites and downloaded the exclusive ringtone. On July 26, the powerful secret behind this ringtone was revealed. When held up to a computer, the ringtone could activate a mysterious device buried on Halo3.com. The device revealed the location of the third server, which contained new information on the origins of the Forerunners and their struggle to contain the Flood.
On each previous server, users found clues hidden within objects that hinted at the content of the next episode. On the third server, users found a strange equation buried on a hidden layer of an image. Several days later, an odd post was made on Halo3.com, referencing a poem entitled, When We Two Parted. However, several astute users noticed that the final stanza had been altered, and there were odd spaces before certain characters. The spaces spelled the phrase, Castaway Theory Volman. Almost immediately, users found a book on Amazon.com called, The Castaway Theory, by Professor Jonas Volman. The book theorized that human DNA is actually foreign to Earth and the book's cover matched the image found on the third server exactly. Several users posted reviews of the book and numerous comments were added to the feedback section. One post in particular from a close friend of Volman's named Thomas Sanatos indicated that the professor had gone missing. Over the next several days, users tried to get information about Professor Volman and his mysterious disappearance. Finally, Thomas provided a hotmail address where the professor could be reached. Within minutes, over 5,000 people tried contacting the professor using Windows Live Messenger. An interactive chat agent designed with the professor's personality was able to simulate conversations with thousands of people simultaneously. A certain line of questioning would prompt the professor to reveal the location of the fourth server. Grand Ballet of Stars, we are almost the same you and I. Breathtaking and mundane, but my identity is not your concern. I am expected. Doors open for me and the universe sighs. But the unexpected, the chance to regain the future, you need look no closer than yourself. The legends that spring up around unaccountable signs, the tiniest differences that make the world habitable, that's how you came to be known. That's our connection. That's why I lead you to the renown. Haven't you seen the signs, Redeemer? The small under-the-surface bridges between all this? Those connections saved you before. But this time, you are on your own. We are all on our own. On each of the Forerunner servers, users were able to download a mysterious star map. While there was much speculation on what the star maps revealed, the fourth server finally provided the answer. Overlaying the star maps on top of each other revealed the phrase, the artifact location, which led users to a website containing GPS coordinates and a date and time. 
in New York, LA, and Seattle, on August 16th, the fifth and final Forerunner video was broadcast onto the sides of buildings at those coordinates. As a broken marionette, the future is out of my hands. Infinite answers to our present have shifted, and you, Redeemer, now hold the keys. Tomorrow, things may be clear, but I will not be here to witness the clarity. More records remain, miles not drawn upon, depths you are not yet ready to grasp. But the luxury of readiness is almost at an end. And we shall soon see what we shall soon see. Walk among the footfalls of empty dust, living where your kind's bones make soil. The next movement is set to begin. As before, the battle is one-sided. As before, a failure in action may lead to the death of all. But new to this life is the belief that we can overcome. With all five servers unlocked, the Iris campaign came to a close. Each of the five servers contained glimpses into the origins of the Forerunners and their struggle against the Flood. However, for all the questions Iris answered, many more still remain. Who was behind the cryptic messages? What ultimately led to the tragic decision made thousands of years ago to ignite the Halos? And are we destined to repeat this fate once again? Gamers won't have to wait long to find the answers. In Greek mythology, Iris was a messenger, the link between gods and humanity. In Halo 3, on September 25th, the message will finally be completed. The game itself contains the final chapter in the Iris campaign. From newspaper circulars to in-store kiosks, conspiracy street teams to fake books, from chat agents to mobile phones, Iris set a new standard for multimedia campaigns.
and their response has been overwhelming. Over 1.5 million visitors have come to Halo3.com since the campaign began. Pre-orders for Halo 3 reached the 1 million mark, driven in part by Iris. But most importantly, the Iris campaign set the stage for a blockbuster launch of the biggest game in years, Halo 3.